Welcome to chemical reactions, types of reactions. I'm going to go through five types of reactions today. Hopefully you're having a great Thursday or Friday, but the first one that I'm going to go over today is synthesis. All right, so that's number one. We also have decomposition. Sorry about that. Let me erase that guy here. Decomposition, if I could spell right, that'd be great. We'll have single replacement. We'll have double replacement and combustions. I know those of you that had me in class already have an idea of what combustion is. And we've also been working on uh, different types of these already as well. So what is synthesis reaction? Of course, um, it's going to be known as a composition or combination reaction as well. In this type of reaction, two substances are going to react to form a compound. Um, it could be anything. This, this also could be elements. They could be elements or they could be compounds. Uh, as long as it's making one then it's a combination. So this guy here is going to be compound. But again, this substance could be, you know, two things going together to form one, like a, uh, a water and an active metal. That's going to make metal hydroxide, okay? So some of that stuff we're going to talk about here in just a little bit. All right, let's give you a couple examples. Unfortunately, without the PowerPoint being reactive, you get to see it kind of all at once at, on this slide. So it's just a PDF, so I apologize for that. But if you take a look, this is what I was just indicating before, right? This calcium oxide and water, um, a metal oxide and water, all right, is going to make a metal hydroxide, right? Metal hydroxide. That's kind of a rule that we're going to have to know. We're going to see about it here in just a little bit. Um, secondly, um, you could see that I have hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Both of those, you should know, those are two diatomics. All right, two diatomics. All right, we also know that magnesium and sulfur will combine to form MGS. A couple of things you should note on this. Why is it MGS? Because it's a plus two, this is a minus two. All right, so there is no reduction there this is gonna these are gonna reduce and we're gonna have a one-to-one -one ratio so again the parts are gonna combine to form the whole this is a word down here all right notice it's always one product one compound one product okay all right so we're gonna get the hang of this as well notice there's just always one thing all right now the ones you have to memorize be on this slide so let me go over this Right? These must be memorized. All right, There is no doubt that you need to memorize all of these three things. There's going to be also some decomposition reactions that we're going to have to memorize as well. But let me give you an example. I already did one, so I'm going to go ahead and do a different one. I'm going to do magnesium oxide. That's a solid. I'm going to react it with water, which is a liquid. And then I'm going to make magnesium hydroxide okay now you notice you're sitting there hey mr hate yeah 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 it's not balanced or is it balanced i think it is let me see i got one magnesium one magnesium i got two oxygens one two i got two hydrogens one two so that is balanced so you have to know that a metal oxide so you have to know calcium oxide magnesium oxide sodium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, whatever it is, if you put that in water, you get a metal hydroxide. So you have to figure out what the charge is. Now, if I'm looking over here, remember this charge, plus two, OH minus one, that's where this two is gonna come over here, right? So we gotta make sure that we're checking the charges. Like sodium hydroxide, remember, is just gonna be NaOH, all right? Because why? Plus one, minus one. All right, now, a non-metal oxide. So this one's a little bit different. Remember, non-metal, what are we talking about? 
everything over here on this side. So we got sulfur dioxide, we have water. All you're gonna do is add them up, all right? I hate to say that. So you're gonna add these guys up. What does that mean? Okay, well that means that if I have two of these here and one here, I'm gonna have three here. That makes it balanced for us. We don't have to do much more. So sulfur dioxide and water is gonna make sulfurous acid. Why is it sulfurous? Well, of course it's sulfurous because SO3, two minus is sulfite. All right, very good. And the last one is metal oxide and a non-metal oxide. So let me give you an example of calcium oxide plus we'll go ahead and just use the sulfur dioxide again. We're basically going to combine those very simply put, CaSO3. Now notice, what do we got here? We got two and we got one. That's going to make three. So when you get these synthesis things, they're not going to randomly get a random four or whatever they're gonna add up to what you had in the previous, uh, in the reactants. All right. Now, decomposition, um, that's where you're gonna break apart. So decomposition means to break apart. All right, so we're gonna break apart. Synthesis, by the way, which I didn't say, synthesis is to build. To build, okay? Um, it's the opposite. So we're going to take one thing and break it down into two. A compound here is going to yield a substance plus a substance. All right, so let's take a look. How do we do that? Well, there's going to be a couple ways. It's going to require energy such as heat, light, or electricity to occur. Right, the whole thing is broken into two parts. There's some that break into three parts, but kind of beyond the scope of this class. So we're not really super concerned with that. Let's take a look at a couple examples. Again, this slide's gonna be a little bit messed up when you're looking at it. I did the best I could to kind of rearrange things. Oh, take a look here. For all decompositions, we're gonna have something over the top of the arrow. All right, so if I had water, to break about water, I'm gonna need some electricity. It's called electrolysis. All right, electrolysis is gonna break that stuff apart. Um, to break up sodium chloride salt into Na and, ooh, look at this, Cl2, because it's a diatomic. All right, that, we're gonna need electricity as well. And then last but not least, all the carbonates that we have, calcium carbonate, whatever that may be, that's gonna break up, and this is something you're gonna memorize on the next slide, into a metal oxide and carbon dioxide, all right? So the whole is gonna be breaking down. Pretty good examples. Do you see the pattern? Of course we see the pattern. We have one reactant, two products. There's your pattern. Okay, one reactant, two products. All right, now, the four that you need to memorize here, all right, the four that you need to memorize here, let me give you a different one, because we just had one on the last slide. Let me give you this. Magnesium carbonate. Well, wait a minute, Mr. Eight, is that right? Well, let's see. Mg plus two, CO3 minus two. Absolutely, that's right. Wow, I still got it. All right, MgO plus carbon dioxide. Of course, we know it's gonna be gas. This most likely is gonna be a solid, and this is gonna be a solid. All right, so that's one we have to memorize. What happens to a metal carbonate? It breaks up into a metal oxide and carbon dioxide. Now, metal chlorates. All right, let me give you one of these. Uh, oh, by the way, is this balanced? Yes, it is balanced. Come on, I'm not a rookie. All right, NaClO3. Uh, sodium chlorate, all right, we gotta heat that guy. We're gonna get a metal chloride, so that means this is my metal, sodium chloride. Well, yeah, that's remember, that's plus one, minus one, so that guy's good. Plus oxygen gas. Oxygen's a diatomic, don't forget, you gotta know your Brinkelhoff. Brinkelhoff or 
I bring clay for our new house, whatever it may be. Don't forget your diatomics. Yay. Don't forget your diatomics. All right. Uh, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Big, big guy. You forgot the wonderful balancing. What do you mean balancing? Well, we got the super secret trick, right? I'll put this two here. I'm going to put this three here. I'm going to whistle. My dog's going to come running. That leads me to have a put a two over there in front of the N.A. We always got to have that two in front of the N.A. because we had two over here. All right. Now, pretty easy to do because auction's only in one thing, right? Auction's here and auction's here. If auction was split, can't really do the super secret trick. We'll try it, but we can't really do it. All right, let's talk about calcium hydroxide then. A metal hydroxide. Ready? Metal. Remember, metals are going to be... Over here are my metals. Pick anyone you want. Doesn't matter. It's going to make a metal oxide. Well, that's pretty easy. I'm going to choose one that I don't have to worry about balancing too much. So when I do that, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's balanced. Way, way to go. Remember, this is a liquid. This is going to be a solid. This is going to be a solid. All right. Oh, this is a gas, by the way. This is going to be an aqueous. I don't know, something like that. Solid. Either way, um, unless it tells you, don't do it. Don't put anything on there unless it tells you or it asks you if you're using your solubility chart, which we're going to do later. And last but not least, an oxy acid. Remember, an oxy acid, sulfuric acid is an oxy acid. All acids are aqueous. We're going to make a non-metal oxide. Well, remember what I told you earlier, right? Our oxygen has to add up to four. So I would have to have SO3. That's going to be a gas plus water. Well, yeah, see, check this out, right? Three and one is four. I had four over here. So four equals three plus one. I'm good to go. Do I have to balance it? Ah, nah, because I did that beginning uh, before that. So now it says, okay, let's go ahead and do some that we're going to do on our own. It says, try it. So let's go ahead and do some. All right. So if I'm looking at these two again, I'm going to take my AL, CL, but I got to check the charges. Remember, this was a plus three, minus one. AL, CL, three. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got a balance. Got a balance. That's going to go here. That's going to go here. Oops, sorry. Three, two, and if I put a two there, got to put a two over there. Ooh, let's just do it real easy. SO2, done. Okay. Ooh, metal oxide and water. That makes a metal hydroxide, B-A-O-H-2. Ah, that's balanced too. I'm living the dream here. All right, well, this is going to make a carbon dioxide and water. All right, well, why? Well, I had to make carbon dioxide. That's the rule, carbonate decomposition, and a metal oxide. Well, metal, water, H can act as a, a metal, so we're good to go. That's all that's left. If I pull out CO2 from this, what do I have left? H, and I have another H, and I have one more O. Well, that's H2O. There it is, right there. Okay, KBR. I got to get K plus O. Don't be a bum. Know that that is Brinkelhoff. Brinkel, right? Hoff. So I got to balance this two and a two. And then last but not least, I got this uh, potassium chlorate. That makes a metal chloride. And oxygen gas. I know oxygen gas. Oh, Brinkelhoff, Brinkelhoff, and metal oxide. Again, nothing really need to know here. That's a gas, of course, but I do have to balance it. I'm going to take my three, put it here, take my two, put it there. That makes that have to be a two. Two, two, three. Two, two, three. All right. Okay, moving on we got to talk about single replacement reactions. All right, so in this case, basically we're talking about an element, all right, an element element. Sorry about that. 
Plus a compound is going to make an element and a compound. All you're doing is taking this and putting it here, and this is going there. That's all it's doing. It's, it's actually easier with words. Iron plus copper to chloride. All right, what would that make? Well, I'm going to take this guy off, and I'm going to move it right here. I'm going to take the copper off and move it over here, giving me copper. And at that point, you don't really need to worry about the charge because by itself, iron three chloride. Now, you're saying, well, how am I going to know it's iron three? Well, in that case, we're probably just going to give that iron three to you, okay? So you don't have to, like, freak out about that iron three. But that makes it a lot easier uh, for us to figure out. So this copper is going to go here and this iron three is going to go there. Okay. Now the ions are going to switch places. All right? I just talked about it in this case. Take a look. This guy switched here, but don't forget this is a diatomic. All right. So pretty simple. Oh, I got to balance that. Don't forget to balance that. Got to balance this too. Ooh, look, I got this, and I got this. All right, let me do that. That gives me that. This gives me that. All right, so again, I, I can do it pretty quickly. I, I would hope some of you are getting to that point where, hey, I can do this pretty quickly. So again, we got element. We have a compound. It's going to make an element a compound. Remember, it doesn't matter. This is still an element. The problem is it's a diatomic. It's something by itself. If it by itself, it needs a two, you give it a two. All right. All right, let's take a look at this guy here. So we're talking about anionic. Ooh, what does that mean? Anionic means the negative ions switch. The negative. So in this case, let's add F2 plus 2NaCl. I'm going to switch the F and the Cl to get NaF plus Cl. Oh, diatomic. Let me put this two in here. All right, that's diatomic. So those guys can switch places too. So you have to look at and say, well, is the first thing I'm looking at an anion negative or a cation positive? Once you do that, you switch cations or anions. All right, you got to pick. If you have two cations, that's what you switch. Switch. If you have two anions, you switch the anions. That's as easy as it is. The deal is you got to predict the products. So this is pretty easy right now because I'm not giving you words, okay? I'm not giving you word equations. Well, in this case, when I'm looking at this guy, I got to I got to imagine this, right? This is, makes it harder for me. H O H. Now I know that this zinc is going to go there and the hydrogen is going to come here. So that means I have zinc hydroxide plus H2. Ho 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 ho. Zinc has a plus two charge, all right? So ZnCl2, when I do that, don't forget I got a balance. So I got to put that two over here. All right, now I got two anions here, two anions, okay? Two anions, so that means my Cl has to switch with my Br. So I know NaCl and I know, oh, Br2, Brinkelhoff, Brinkelhoff, I got to make sure I balance it because I'm cool. I don't want to not balance it. Two and two. That makes me cool. Balancing makes me cool. Like, if you can't balance, you're a donkey. If you don't know what a donkey is, you'll figure it out. All right, here we go. I got two cations. I got to switch AL and CU. CUN? I'm not really sure. Maybe on Monday or Tuesday. All right. ALCL3, whoa, of course, AL has a positive three, CL is minus one. If you stink at subscripts, you got to study. 
All right, then I got copper. Oh, take a look. I got I to gotta do some balancing. I got a three and I got a two. So let me put this two here. Let me put this three here. Let me put this three over here. And then, oh, let me put that two over here. I like it. I like it. Oh, I got two cations. That means that's what I have to switch. Magnesium is going to go with nitrate. Now notice, look, I'm doing that just because I know. I know that magnesium has a plus two, by the way. I know it has a plus two. And then cobalt by itself. Um, I think that guy's balanced. I got two nitrates, two nitrates, one cobalt, one cobalt, one magnesium. I'm good to go. All right, now, ooh, I got two cations. Here we go. Those got to switch places. So let me put my AL by itself because I'm cool. And I got to put calcium acetate. All right, now that guy's not balanced. I take a look. Why? Well, I got a three here and I got a two here. Well, that means I got to put a two here. That gives me a two there. This also gives me a three here and then a three here. Woohoo! A lot of good stuff there. A lot of good stuff. All right, now you have to get out your chart. Okay, I gave you a chart, all right, or it's located on the front desk or in drawer, bottom drawer, if, if you want to tell your sub you didn't get one. You must get that to do this. Get it to do this. All right, I'll give you a second here. I'll give you a second. So if you didn't get one, now's the time. So basically we use this list to figure out if something is more active than the other. If something is more active than the other, it will replace it. If it doesn't, there's no reaction. Like, think about it. If I'm putting iron in water, most likely nothing's going to happen. A long time, some rust may happen or whatever. But if I drop, generally drop a chunk of metal in water, nothing really happens. So as a chemist, you have to know if there's going to be a reaction or not. And if you know that, then it makes this pretty easy. And you can read what it says. If an element is above the element it's replacing, it can replace that element. If the element is below, um, it is replacing, it will not occur. So we write no reaction. And don't forget, I'm a tricky guy, so I may give you some no reactions that you're going to have to do. All right, let's see the first one, okay? I'm going to zoom in a little bit. All right, we got to find, we have zinc and copper, right? These are the two that we're looking at, zinc and copper. So zinc is, okay, a well above where copper is. So that means that a reaction will take place. If a reaction will take place, you just follow the same rules. It's no, no different. You're following the same rules for that. So zinc is above copper and it will, the reaction will occur. And when we do that, we're going to switch these. We're going to get zinc chloride. Why is it? Oh, remember, it's plus two, minus one. Uh, two chlorine, two chlorine, one copper, one copper, one zinc, one zinc. We're good to go. So all you do is check your chart. Everything's good at that point. It will run. All right. Well, this guy here, all right, you can see what's going to happen because I already put it on there. But in this case, zinc is the free. All right, so it's free. So you check where zinc is. Zinc is first. The one that wants to replace it is higher. If the one replacing it that would replace it is higher, then there's no reaction. All right, you understand? So zinc, lower. Magnesium, which would go there, is higher then you get no reaction, okay? So if I put uh, magnesium chloride, a solution together, and drop zinc in it, all right? No reaction, it will not occur, all right? It will not occur, all right? No reaction. So I write NR up there, all right? So what about zinc and water? Now, here's the deal. This guy's a little crazy because 
it says liquid water. Now, we have to kind of look around here at what we have. Let's see. All right, most reactive reacts with water, acids, or this. We got hydrogen is not a metal. It's included for reference. So we're kind of, well, where are we going to get this water? Okay, where are we going to get this and figure out what's going on with the water? So we have to look at this right here. And it says on there that it reacts with steam, but not cold water replacing hydrogen or any other like warm water, whatever it may be. So in this case, we'll only react in its gas form. And we should know that gas form is steam, all right? This is liquid water, all right? So the reaction will not occur, N-R, not recur. So you have to read some of these texts as well in order to figure out what is going on. All right. All right, what about this guy? Magnesium and water. So again, we're gonna have to read this very carefully. Let's zoom in and take a look. Magnesium reacts with steam, but not cold water replacing hydrogen. Okay, so, Oh, this is cool. This, so this is gas. So that means we're going to get it. This hydrogen is going to come over to this magnesium. I'm going to get magnesium hydroxide and H2 gas. All right, that's what I'm going to get. Why am I going to get H2 gas? Because this hydrogen, all right, this OH went with the magnesium and H2 went over here. All right, so when you see it, uh, I always write HOH. I know I told most of you guys that. I usually write HOH, so then I know what is going on. Remember, H is a gas, and then you gotta check um, that it was steam, okay? It shouldn't be too bad there. That guy balanced? Yeah, he's balanced right there, okay? So we have this. So the free one was here, and then bromine, not gonna react. All right, we're gonna try some, all right? We're gonna try some. So again, you're gonna have to look at your activity series. All right, look at the activity series in order to do this. So you have to figure out, one, is lithium higher than barium? Well, the answer is yes, it is. So that means lithium's gonna go here, barium's gonna go here. So I'm gonna write LiSO4, Cannot forget that Li has a plus one charge, and then I would have barium. That guy is not balanced. I need to add the two right here. All right, now I got to look at the nonmetals, the anions. That's on the far right. Well, iodine, uh, bromine, it is less reactive than that. So at this point, we're going to get a no reaction. Let me go back and show you. All right. No reaction, all right? That bromine is not going to replace uh, the iodine because it's more reactive. All right, next up, we have to check calcium and hydrogen. So when we do that, we find out that calcium is higher. So we gotta do calcium phosphate. Calcium phosphate is gonna be Ca3, PO42 because of its plus two and uh, minus three charge plus hydrogen gas. I need to balance this. Well, let's start with calcium. I'm gonna put the three over here that was over here. And that didn't change much. How many phosphates do I have? Well, I have two, put this here. That leaves me a three there. All right, very good. All right, got to check. Cobalt and magnesium. All right, magnesium is more reactive. It's higher on the chart. Cobalt plus MgNO32. All right, that guy's already balanced. I already know that's balanced. We did one earlier. Okay, lead and tin. Well, check your chart. What are you thinking? You're right. It's not gonna replace, we're gonna have no reaction. So if I do that and I look at that, lead is gonna be 
uh, a little bit higher than the tin, all right? Then last but not least, we gotta check these. Chlorine is higher. So it's gonna replace, I'm gonna make KCl. Oh, wait a minute, where's my two? I don't put a two on Cl. Why would I put a two Cl? I don't put a two on Cl. I'm not gonna carry over subscripts number one, <coughs> but number two, I'm gonna check my charges. Plus one, minus one. All right, plus Br2, Brinkelhoff, Brinkelhoff. Let's balance that guy out by putting a two right there. And we're gonna have to put a two right there. All right, so we're gonna do that right now. All right, very good, moving on. All right, the next one is double replacement. All right, so we've covered three, this is the fourth. We have one more after that, combustion, which can be the easiest, but maybe the hardest to balance. All right, in this place, we're gonna switch ions. A goes to C, C goes to A. Very simple. Again, I kind of think the word equations make it a little bit easier. So kind of as you write words, this makes this much, much easier for you to maybe understand. Um, and this one, maybe not the case because it's sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide, but basically hydrogen sulfate and sodium hydroxide. This one may get a little confusing where I'm getting water on the right and so forth. Uh, basically, it's gonna become hydrogen hydroxide. Remember, this is hydrogen hydroxide. Sorry about my dogs, they, they seem to like to fight. Uh, two more compounds are formed. All right, so let's take a look. Remember, cations always come first. All right, that seems to be a problem. And most of these will be uh, no prefixes for most, no prefixes. You may have a couple, but remember metals don't have prefixes, all right? Always come first in the ionic compound, make sure that you have your ions in the right order. So let me give you this quick example. We have sodium hydroxide and copper two chloride. So that means I'm gonna get, excuse me, sodium hydroxide and copper two chloride. That means I get sodium chloride and copper two hydroxide. That's what it, that's what it means. All right. So all I'm doing is switching sodium with copper two. All right. So copper two is going to come out, and that's going to just go replace those. All right. It's it's a very simple technique. Uh, you shouldn't have any kind of issues with kind of understanding it. The biggest thing and the biggest problem is making sure that you write your products or reactants correctly. That could be the biggest hang up on this. All right, moving on. So let's let's predict uh, what we got here. So if I'm looking at this, I don't have to look at any activity series. I'm gonna look at some things, but that comes a little bit later. When we are just doing this, all we're gonna do is take this, move them here, and this, move them here. I do not carry subscripts. I have to check charges. So that means I'm gonna write BAPO4 and I'm gonna check my subscripts. I'm gonna check. Well, I got plus two and I got minus three. So this three is gonna go here and now I got this. All right, I'm gonna check. Now I got NA and CL. Well, at this point, if you don't know NACL, shame on you. All right, so now I gotta balance this sucker. All right, so let's balance it out. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a, my look at the barium, put my three here. I changed my chlorine right now. So I'm gonna go over here and make it a six. Now I change my sodium, go back and make it a two because that would give me two times three is six. Right, again, we're doing it fast, but for the majority of you, you should be getting it at this point. All right, now we're gonna move this and we're gonna move this. Oh, okay. So that means I have K and SO4. Well, K is plus one, SO4 is minus two, K2, SO4, and I have HCl, plus one, minus one, hydrochloric acid. So we produce some hydrochloric acid. Now I gotta balance it, put my two here, check this, put my two here, check my hydrogen, I'm good, right? I always go left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, whatever it is. I change one, I go back and change the other. I change that one, I go back and change the other. 
That is the best way to balance. It's not guess and check at all. All it is is following through with what you have and then going to it and changing the other side. Once you change one, you go back and change the other. All right, next up, silver sulfate and ammonium chloride. Don't forget, silver is always plus one. All right, so I'm gonna bring that over. That means my, this guy has to go here, this guy has to go here. So I gotta make ammonium sulfate. Well, that's a plus one. And I know that sulfate is a minus two. Why do I know? Because I just checked right there. Plus, um, what do I got here? Silver chloride. Well, you're gonna learn in just a little bit that the silver chloride is uh, solid, but uh, right now, don't worry about that. So let me go ahead and balance this out. Okay, I changed my amount of chlorine to two, right? I put the two here, that two went over here. I changed chlorine, let me go ahead and put the two here. Now I'm good, I'm done. So I just needed two twos. All right, so we got a little challenge here, right? We got a little challenge. We got the uh, silver acetate and tin four, uh, nitride. Ooh, big challenge. Let's take a look at what we're doing here. All right. Hold on one second. I'm moving some stuff around. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my silver over, which I know has a plus one. Now I know that's going to combine with this. Silver and tin are switching places. So I got this AG3N. Okay. whip de doo I still have tin four, right? Why do I have a four? Because that is the charge plus four. Four. acetate C2H3O2, put my four right there, um, and acetate we know is a minus one. So now all we have to do is balance it. Again, I'm making it look easy, so slow down and rewind if you need to, but you should be pretty good to go. All right, so here's the biggest problem right here. I'm gonna look at where I should start. I'm gonna start with this four because that guy looks to me like that would be the biggest problem. Four and a one, so I'm gonna put a four here. Now I know I'm kind of in the right ballpark. That is gonna be a 12. And if I have 12 of these, that means I need three acetates. All right, big challenge, challenge accepted. We are moving on, we are moving on. So I got a 12, I got a one, I got a four, and I got a three on the last one. All right. So double replacements, what do we know? Uh, most double replacements are gonna form a precipitate. Remember what a precipitate is? A solid. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the precipitate. Uh, formation of water, that's a neutralization reaction. This is an acid plus base. A base contains hydroxide and a base will contain H um, or formation of a gas. Yay, bubble, 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 bubble. All right, I'm having fun. All right, here we go. All right, so, so um, these guys right here, so if we were to look at these, we got to kind of know what's going on and, and being able to predict. All of these ions are going to switch places, as we know. Sorry about that. All these ions are going to switch places. Okay, he's gonna go there. So I'm gonna get potassium nitrate. At this point, potassium nitrate. Should be knowing that potassium nitrate. The next one we're gonna get is lead iodide, lead to iodide. Well, that guy is a precipitate. And we're gonna talk about how they're a precipitate in just a minute, all right, when we are predicting using our solubility chart. All right, so we're gonna use our solubility chart. If I go to my solubility chart right now, which I don't have it up and I can't really switch back and forth, that's the front side of the activity series which you used earlier. You look up what do nitrates do and what do iodides do, all right? Iodide is an exception with PB, two plus, it's gonna form a solid. Nitrates are always aqueous. The good news is I have it memorized, so I don't really need to look it up. All right, this guy is going to be NaCl, NaCl, sodium chloride, always aqueous, and then water is always a liquid. H is going to replace this. I'm going to get HOH, 
HOH equals H2O, okay? This guy right here, KCL. Why am I doing K? Okay, I'm gonna switch this. I don't bring over a subscript. Why? It's plus one, minus one. It's the hardest thing to do, not carry over subscripts. Well, I'm not gonna carry over one because it's a minus two, this is a plus one. H2S. All right, so let's make sure. Have I balanced all of these? No, I didn't balance this one over here. This guy right here should be a two, if I can do that. Uh, this should be a two, and this should be a two. All right, let's do this. Uh, the next one is balanced. This one is not balanced. All right, this guy should be a two here, and should be a two over here. All right. I don't know how I can move this bar. I got a big bar sitting there. So it is what it is. All right. So make sure they're balanced. You got 2 1 2 1 for the top, 1 1 1 1 for the second one, and 2 1 2 1 for the next one. All right. Let's talk about a neutral, neutralization reaction. All right. So on this guy here, um, remember I told you it's an acid and a base. All right. So in this case, and that's gonna make water, all right? Water, that is something that we wanna create. So in this case, all we're doing really is still just moving the NH4 over to the H, HOH, hydrogen hydroxide. So we're gonna take our NH4, which has a plus one, and our sulfate, which has a minus two, ammonium sulfate, and water. And water is always a liquid, unless it tells you it's a gas. Now we need to make sure that we balance this. I'll put my two here. Maybe I won't put my two here. I'll put my two here. And from there, I'll be left to put a two right there. All right, so neutralization, not anything different. You just have to switch the uh, cations again. Again, I'm gonna get water. And this time I'm gonna get aluminum nitrate. Look at me, I'm already doing it because it's a plus three and minus one, plus H2O, all right? That's a liquid. Now I gotta balance it. It looks like I have three nitrates, so I gotta put a three here, and that will give me a three over here. Everything else is balanced at this point. In a neutralization, water and a salt. I say this because that's a multiple choice type question. All right, make sure you know it's water and a salt. So, these guys are salts. All right, those guys are salts. All right, now, formation of a precipitate. All right, this is where we're going to get to. Double replacement produces a precipitate. A solid compound. So, what do we have? We got um, K... NO3 plus PBI2. Again, I just went over that on the last slide. We know that that's going to be the solid. This is going to be aqueous. And we have to balance that out. So a 2. Uh, I can't see that 2. 2. And that will give this a 2. So on the next one, let's go ahead and look at it. I'm going to, again, have potassium nitrate. KNO3 is potassium nitrate. Learn it, memorize it, whatever it is. Fe, which had a plus two charge, that plus two goes over, and S. Well, all sulfides, if you look at the front of your chart, sulfides are insoluble. So we got to put an S here. All right, and this is going to be aqueous. Got to make sure I balance it, put my two here, and I'm done. All right, so you got to read front of chart. If you need the chart, it's in the front, bottom front drawer of the classroom. All right, in part two of our reactions, we have to use our solubility chart. Again, so one side is solubility. And the other side is the activity series. So at this point, you should have been looking at that uh, closely and when I get this example I'm only looking at the products right so solubility is only for the products only products 
always these guys are going to be both aqueous. So they're both solutions. And then from there, you're going to determine if one is aqueous and one is a precipitate, a solid. Um, or it could be a liquid like in a neutralization reaction. But in this case, you look up, you'll find that nitrates are always soluble. That means it will dissolve. Dissolve equals AQ. Okay. For iodine on the chart, it has an exception. One of the exceptions is lead. So lead, it says with lead, I, I minus with lead, and then a couple other ones. So from there, you look at that and you say, okay, well, this is going to be my solid right here, lead to iodide. Um, what is going on in here? Okay, so my first aqueous solution, I had my potassium iodide. I mix that. Now remember, if you put it in water, it's going to break up into its individual ions. So you're like, why is it doing that? Well, it tells you aqueous equals ions. Anytime it's aqueous, it stays in ions. All right. So then if I look over here, I still have this. I'm going to have PV. I'm going to have NO3. Why? Because it's aqueous and it's in, that means ions. Now, once they're mixed and I dump the potassium iodide into the lead to nitrate, we're gonna have a precipitate come out and a solid is formed, all right? That solid is formed, that's I2. I don't know why it says three, PBI2, okay? That solid is formed, but aqueous, you're still in ions. So this guy is gonna make the solid, it's gonna go on the bottom, it goes on the bottom, okay? It's pretty simple. All you have to do is look at the anion, sometimes alkali metals, they are all soluble as well. Okay, so those guys are all going to be soluble. All right, so another example right here is going to be the potassium sulfide, all right, as well as the iron to nitrate, okay? So when I look at these two, all right, I'm going to go ahead and pop in what I'm going to make. So... This is going to come over here, so I have K, and remember, that's going to go where the Fe is, and the NO3, the Fe is going to go where the K is. So K is plus one, as we know. Oh, it's a shocker, potassium nitrate, yet again. And over here, we're going to have FeS. So now we look up on our chart, and we find sulfide, S2 minus, or the word sulfide we find out that they are insoluble. So now this is the solid. We know that this is aqueous. All alkali metals and nitrates are soluble. Okay, nitrates are always soluble. Sulfides are insoluble with iron, and that equals a precipitate. So all you have to do is look up, find out which one it is. Pretty simple. All right, not all double replacement reactions are, um, are gonna occur. So if both products come out as aqueous, okay, let's see what these products are. So I'm going to have NaI, well, that's an alkali metal, plus one, minus one. And I'm going to have KNO3. We always know potassium nitrate for the 87th time is aqueous. Now we got to check this one. Well, it's an alkali metal. And iodides generally are soluble unless they're with lead and, and gold one and a couple other ones. So this is aqueous as well. So what does that mean? That means that there's no reaction. All right, so we write NR. Just like the solubility uh, rules or the activity, activity series of metals, if you both come out aqueous, then there is no reaction. All right, no reaction. All right, we're going to practice some right now. All right, let's practice. All right, so again, we're going to switch, and then we have to determine what product is soluble and what is insoluble. Obviously, a precipitate, or it could be a no reaction. You never know. So in this case, we're going to move the lead with the H. H is going to go where the lead is. Again, it's a very simple process. So we're going to take H. You know, H is plus one, and then we have acetate, C2H3O2. That is minus one. Oh, we already know that all acids... Are what? 
are AQ. We already learned that. So I'm going to put AQ. I already know that. Plus PBS. How, well, how do I know it's PBS? Well, over here it's a plus 2. And I know that S is a minus 2. Sulfides are going to be soluble or insoluble, excuse me. So that's going to be a solid. Okay. Now I got to make sure that I balance this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and switch colors. In order to balance this, it looks like I have two of these guys. Now I have two H's, correct, and I have two acetates. All right, so I'm good to go. All right, the next one, I'm going to take my calcium. Hold on, take my calcium. I got to move my little bar. <laughs> All right, my calcium is going to move where my magnesium is. Magnesium is going to go where calcium is. So that means I'm going to get calcium chromate plus magnesium hydroxide. Now, notice what I did. I just go ahead and plus two, minus two. So I got MG, by the way, that looks like this. Let me erase this and make this a little neater here for you. I think I'm erasing, I don't know. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm just coloring over with black. All right, okay, so this becomes MG, O H two. Why? Well, of course, you should say, well, that's a plus two, Mr. Eight. That's a minus one. I need to have parentheses around my uh, polyatomics to show that I have more than one. And if I come back here, this is plus two. That's minus two. Now, when we look at this, we find out that calcium chromate is actually aqueous and hydroxide compounds are going to be the solid. Okay. Now we got to make sure that we balance this guy. I'm looking around. I got two hydroxides. I got two hydroxides. I got one calcium, one calcium, one magnesium, one magnesium. Okay, so I'm done at this point. All right, next is going to be move the AG. All right, and you probably already heard me say silver chloride is a solid, but we can check chloride mixed with silver makes a solid. Silver's always plus one, that's one we have to memorize. And we have NaNO3, all nitrates are aqueous. All of these are plus one, so we don't have to do any balancing. If all the charges are the same, there's no balancing to be done. We can already tell in the next one that the charges are not the same, right? We got threes, we got twos, uh, we got different stuff going on. So again, my Na is going to switch place with my Ca. All right, so I'm going to have uh, NaNO3. I look at that again, again, plus one, minus one, plus Ca. And I got phosphate. That's a plus two. Phosphate is a minus three. So I'm bringing this three down, and I'm going to put this two here. Now, when I go back, I need to balance this. I got to go ahead and put it my, I'm going to look at phosphates. So in order to get phosphates balanced, I'm going to put a two there. That makes six nitrate, six ni uh, sodium. Now I got six nitrates, six nitrates, not, right? In case we're wondering and we forgot, we check this. We don't have 18, we got six. So I come back over here and I put a three and I'm good to go. So I got two, one, six, Two, three, six, one. Two, three, six, one. All right, for my balancing. Okay, that's double replacement. So you got to practice using your solubility chart. You are not required to memorize any solubility rules. You're only required to be able to use the chart effectively. All right, the last one and my favorite one is combustion. All right, so basically we're going to use oxygen. All right, so a hydrocarbon. Remember what a hydrocarbon is? C. X, H, Y. So the good news is I could just tell you, I could just say, oh, we got uh, propane. And you sure already know that that's C3H8. We burn it in oxygen. Remember, everything has to burn in oxygen. If you want to put a fire out, you put a blanket over it, you cover it. It doesn't get oxygen, the fire goes out. Always makes carbon dioxide and water. So one of the most common combustion reactions is methane. This is what's happening in your room when you are uh, using a Bunsen burner. So we have methane burned in oxygen, makes carbon dioxide and water. And this is how we do this. We're gonna balance it with a Cho rule. 
We balance carbon first, hydrogen second, oxygen last. So I check my carbon, carbon has one, one. Hydrogen has four, so yes, you see the two is already here. Now in order to check my oxygen, I gotta do this. All right, two plus, well, that's two equals four. I then take that and I divide by two to get my two that's gonna go right there, okay? So we gotta show it, we gotta show it. That's like huge. All right, we'll look at another one. Let's go ahead and take octane, all right? You know what octane is? Wait, I didn't hear you. Johnny, what's octane? I can't hear you. Yes, you're right. C8, H18. Remember, it's going to be 2X plus 2. Plus oxygen makes carbon dioxide and water. All right, so now we have to show it. So I got to go ahead and come over here. And I would put an eight. Okay. Now at this point, I have eight. Now I'm going to do my hydrogen. I would put a nine. So now I got to check. That is 16 plus nine. That equals 25. You say, oh, crap. That's not going to work because that's an odd number. I can't divide that by two. So I got to go back and erase. And then I'm going to double everything. So I go back to the original hydrocarbon and I double it. If I get an odd number of oxygen, I'm gonna double, okay? So I'm gonna double this. Okay, so I come over here. That's gonna be a 16. I have to put an 18 here. Now I got 32 plus 18, that equals 50. I can definitely divide that by two and put that right there. Okay, so that's a big boy. Uh, 225, 16, 18. All right. Gasoline is a mixture in hydrocarbons. General formula C8H18. All right. All right. So a little bit more information. You can have an incomplete combustion where you have a hydrocarbon and not enough oxygen. That could be dangerous, right? Incomplete combustion and give you carbon monoxide. All right. That's poisonous. You also get soot. That's soot. We did that earlier this year with the evaporating dish. We generated some soot and we did an incomplete combustion. You might not remember that, uh, but we definitely did. All right. Other elements can be involved in a combustion reaction such as sulfur and nitrogen, but we're going to focus on the combustion of a hydrocarbon. All right. So tips for balancing. All right. Let's take a look at this guy here. All right. We got a little benzene. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take a look. We're gonna balance with uh, carbon first. So I'm gonna put a six here. Hydrogen second, I'm gonna put a three here. Oh, what do we have now? I got 12 plus three. What do we say? Oh no, we gotta go back and double the first. So let's go ahead and erase this, okay? And we're gonna double the first one. I got a 15. 15 didn't really work too well for me, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and put this here. We're gonna double. So that will give me 12 here. And now I'm gonna put a six here. So I got 24 plus six is 30, right? There's my six. That's gonna give me a 15 right there. So two, 15, 12, and six, all right? This gives us an odd number. This may work. Um, there are halves. I don't really talk about halves, but if you had one mole of this, just so you know, if I had one, uh, I would do one, I would do 15 halves, and I would do six and three. A uh, little bit beyond the scope of this class, but uh, I just want to make sure you know that that is possible to do that. All right. All right, so this is pretty simple here. We're going to go ahead and... Uh, Predict the products. Whoa, every one of these is carbon dioxide and water. So I'm going to go ahead and list those out right now. CO2 plus H2O. I never mess that up. I got to get that right every time. Combustion, carbon dioxide, and water. So let's go ahead and take a look. We got propane. I think I already did this earlier, but maybe not. So I'm going to go ahead and put a three here and a four here. That's six plus four. 
equals 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And that 5 is going to go right there. Voila! We got it. So now I'm going to go ahead and do this guy. I'm going to go ahead and put a 2 here. I'm going to balance my hydrogen. I'm going to put a 3 here. So right now I have 7, right? 4 times 3 is 7. Well, that's not going to work. I'm going to go back and double this, all right, and get rid of this, all right? All right, so now I'm going to put my 4 here. I'm going to go ahead and put my 6 here. 8 and 6, all right, is 14, and divide by 2. 8 plus 6 is 14, and then divide by 2. All right, and the last one we have here, well, not the last one, but we have one more at the bottom. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take this 7. We're going to bring it over here, and we're going to take this 8 and put it over here. 14 plus 8, that gives us a good number. 22 divided by 2, 11. All right, very good. Now we got the partner challenge here, which I'll go ahead and work through you. We always know it's going to make carbon dioxide and water. It doesn't matter what the beginning looks like. That's fine. We're still going to balance our carbon first. So we're going to put a 2 here. We're going to balance our hydrogen second, but we have to count what we have. We have 5 plus 1, so that equals 6. So we got to go ahead and put a 3 here. All right. When we do that, we get 7. All right, 4 plus 3. Well, you would think... You need to double there, but we get to take one off for this. That one comes off and we got six. So then that would leave me a three. Okay. So when you have something like this, which is ethanol, right? You have to take the one off when you add up on the other side. Pretty simple, but effective. All right. As a review, um, we have a synthesis, one compound product. If I have decomposition, I have one reactant. Sorry about that. Um, if I have a single replacement, one element, one compound, one element, one compound, and then two ionic compounds for a double replacement. All right, you can see that how it's just the element is right here. The compound is right here. Two ionic compounds right there. It's all right, hydrocarbon and, and oxygen always produces carbon dioxide and water. Pretty simple. So now you're going to identify the following reactions. All right, these guys, I'm going to give a quick little thing. I'm not, I Hopefully that you can figure out what I mean by them. All right, you should do them on your own. Okay. There will probably be a couple more in your notes. But you should be able to look at these and figure out what they are. All right. All right. And all right. And that is it. So hopefully you could pay attention long enough to watch this video. And I wish you guys a wonderful weekend. Can't wait to see you guys next week.